So Synthalin Energy is now the first publicly traded synthetic fuel company on the Venture Exchange with the ticker ESAF. We've invited CEO Dan Sutton to give us the scoop on the investment opportunity here. Dan, my guess is that a lot of us here watching have uh, to get a better grasp of the scale of the opportunity problem. Uh, so maybe we can start off with that. Um, to get you going, um, I've read that the world consumes over 4 trillion liters of liquid fuels on an annual basis. Where does synthaline fit into that market? And what does being first to market here in the public markets mean for your competitive positioning? Thanks so much for the opportunity. And it is a really exciting time for the future of this alternative fuels segment. This is not new. It's been around a long time. Most people have heard of biofuels or synthetic motor oil. And within that 4 trillion liters a year, this is already about a $1.3 trillion a year segment. And in fact, it's exceptionally rapid growth. We're growing to about 2 trillion a year by 2030. Now, where does synthaline fit in? We don't produce biofuels. And as a result, our fuels are not limited by scarce feedstocks like crops or waste food oil. We use a synthetic process to combine hydrogen and carbon to produce ultra pure, molecularly pure synthetic fuel. This is the highest performance liquid hydrocarbon fuel that one could imagine. And what's special about us is our production system that we call the thermal hybrid production system produces this fuel at about 70% lower cost than the nearest competing technology. How is that possible that you're, that's, that sounds like a massive number. It's a massive number. And the amazing thing for us is that we've sort of inherited these incredible technological growth opportunities and changes within our supply chain that have really come to life just within the last couple of years. We use a process called high temperature electrolysis. This was proven mm -hmm. out at a demo scale as early as sort of early 2010s, 2015, but it's only just become commercially mature. And we mm -hmm. combine that with the elite cutting edge of fuel synthesis reactors. So it's less that we've designed amazing technology and more that we're the beneficiaries of these existing technological advances. Our IP and specialization and a little bit of secret sauce comes in in how we integrate these systems and connect them to exceptionally low-cost energy sources. Well, you've made aviation your primary industry focus. And like you've said, you're targeting the sustainable aviation fuel market. Can you break down for investors why you know this market is scarce and expensive right now? What kind of problem that creates for airlines? And of course, what your approach is here? Well, first of all, we have this singular macroeconomic opportunity. Airlines themselves are actively trying to buy more sustainable aviation fuel to mitigate their own carbon emissions and also look at fuel systems that can allow them to grow and continue to meet the increasing demands of aviation consumption without as much deleterious emissions. However, governments in Europe have also mandated the consumption of minimum amounts of sustainable aviation fuel. This is mostly biofuel today, and because of the same constraints that I already spoke about, this fuel is scarce, it's very expensive, and it does not perform as well as fossil kerosene, which is the jet fuel that they use. So synthetic fuel improves on that performance, it actually has far lower life cycle emissions, and it allows airlines to meet those mandates without the compromise of performance and cost. Additional to this mandated consumption obligation, Every airline that lands at European Economic Zone airports must consume a minimum of 2% SAF, sustainable aviation fuel today, and growing to 6% in 2030 and on from there. The European Union has also introduced a supply side subsidy. So they're going to help airlines pay for this fuel that they're mandated to consume. And this creates a double set of incentives for companies like Synthaline to scale their production, meet these demands, with the support of governments helping airlines introduce more and more of this fuel to their supply chains. Mm -hmm. And when can synthetic fuels compete with the potentially eventually beat fossil fuel prices? So this is what synthaline does uniquely. With our 
demonstrated process. We've proven this out at a lab scale. We're now moving towards demonstration facility and on to commercial scale up over the next few years. Even at a small scale of production, we have this 70% cost advantage relative to the nearest competing technologies in the market. But when we get to industrial scale, even a relatively small scale for an oil refinery, for instance, say about one gigawatt worth of production, that's the tipping point that's been thoroughly researched, well analyzed. This documentation is all publicly available where synthetic fuels get to cost parity with fossil fuels. Now, this isn't the end of the story. We're very early on these growth curves and expansion curves. And the analysis that I've seen suggests that within the next 10 years, we will see synthetic fuels, hydrogen, carbon synthesized to create fuels basically from molecular purity from the ground up actually be substantially lower cost than fossil fuels. And it's synthylene's goal to deliver those production processes not within our lifetimes, not 10 years from now, but as opposed to five years from now. And Dan, can you educate us um, about like hard to electrify sectors? Will synthetic liquid fuel be you know, uh, applicable across or is there a massive difference for potential harder to electrify sectors? I think there's some really interesting sectors that warrant electrification. When you look at an electric car, the motors have higher performance, they're simpler, they're easier to maintain. There's a lot of reasons to electrify sectors like that in the economy. But when it comes to things like aviation, jet turbines simply cannot be electrified. Unfortunately, it's a physics problem. You need an exceptionally high amount of thrust to be able to propel the planes at the pace and speed that air aviation customers have become used to. So unless you want to take a two-day trip across the Atlantic, electrified jet turbines aren't going to be an opportunity. Fossil fuels underpin every luxury, technology, amenity we enjoy in our lives. And from shipping to aviation to industrial operations, metallurgy, there's a ton of sectors in the economy that would be very difficult and very expensive to electrify with current technologies. So synthetic hydrocarbons, much like the existing fossil hydrocarbons we have today, these enjoy exceptional energy densities. There's nothing quite like liquid fuels to be able to propel the motors, engines, turbines, tankers, and pipelines that have become essential to our quality of life in modern society. And that's what we seek to solve with simply using a drop-in substitutable fuel that can meet the needs of existing fossil fuels, but without the negative externalities that are associated with them. Who are your current backers, um, right? And also, why was this the right time to go public for, for Synthaline? Our backers, we are so proud to be partnered with a variety of strategic investors, sort of seed stage opportunists that see that now is the time with these technologies that have reached this degree of industrial maturity to combine them and make them work. Really proud to be working with the Inventa Capital team. Mike Connard and Craig Perry have been backing us since we were a fledgling young startup. And these are the guys that brought us COSA Resources, Next Gen Energy, and most recently, Vizsla Silver. They've built incredible value for shareholders. They build real gear. They actually deploy infrastructure, build mines. They've gone through project financing work and all of these tracks are trajectories that Synthaline must emulate. So having their playbooks in hand is, is such a huge value proposition. And in terms of why now is the right time to go public, first and foremost, being the first publicly traded synthetic fuel company on any global exchange worldwide, we will not be the last. We might be early to this party, but these technologies can only exist for so long before others realize how easy it will be to put them together and create this new era of high performance, low cost and carbon neutral fuels. And so we want to give retail investors, institutional investors, big, small, whoever, the chance to be able to participate us, participate with us on this first day of this dawn of this new era. And so growing 
our market cap, our awareness, and our industrial operations alongside investors in Canada, in Europe soon, in the future in the U.S., this is an amazing opportunity to bring the retail investor along for the ride. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll have to keep following your story here um, here on CO.ca, Dan. Thank you for being here. Thanks so much for your time. Guys, you can go to CO.ca, of course, like I always say, search the ticker symbol. It's E-S-A-F. It's below for you as well. And look at what folks are saying, right? It's perfect place to grab sentiment, especially for a company that's just launched. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.